Hey everyone, this is Martin and I'm here with Mike and Adrian and we're going to be talking today about how to operate a, a well pump off of your solar system. And uh, excuse my voice today, it's shot. Too much working out in the cold, I guess. So anyway, here we are um, and we've got the solar plant initially set up inside of a container and there it is. So here's Mike. Hey Mike. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. And uh, there's Adrian. <laughs> there's Shelly standing over in the shadows. Okay. So what have we got here? Give us kind of a nutshell version of what we've got. All right, the short version. This is the inverter. That's collecting our solar right now and charging our battery bank. And it's outputting to whatever we're running. This is our panel, which we're still in the process of working on that. And this is what starts your well pump. This is a three phase frequency drive. And we don't have three phase power here, we have single phase power. Single phase power is two legs, two hots, or a split phase. So we convert that into three phase using a three phase inverter. So before you get into too much what the description of that is, what is the problem with trying to operate a well pump off of a battery system? Yeah, starting and stopping a single phase pump on a battery system is really bad. It's the initial inrush current, which is the banging off and on of the pump. And a lot of inverters can't handle that. They can't handle a big, a big start load. It's a heavy induction load. So you need to be able to easily step on the pump, which is a nice slow curve. If you had three phase power, this would do it all day long by itself, a nice slow curve. But uh, there's a trick to this that a lot of people don't understand. You can convert single phase power to three phase power, uh, but if your pump is, let's say, a horse and a half, you need to purchase a three horsepower drive unit because it's gonna convert that single phase power into three phase power. But you need to have enough capacitors on board. It's not gonna consume any more energy, but you need to have enough capacitors on board that it will do that automatically. So then, what does this do exactly? Can you demonstrate what it does when, when it kicks yeah. on versus, I guess we can't demonstrate what it's doing, what it tries to do when you don't have this, but when you do have this, you were showing me earlier that... Yeah. Um, right now, it's this particular drive, they're all a little different, but they're all pretty much the same. This one blinks. Just, that's just telling me that when I turn it on, it's gonna go to 60 hertz. And in the United States, our base power is 60 hertz. That's the frequency. So eventually we'll have a start-stop wire in one of these terminals that when we want the pump to start, it'll trigger the, it to do it automatically. But since we're starting here from scratch, I don't have that wire gate. It's real simple. You just push run. And it's, it's bringing the frequency up here slowly. And you can see on the inverter, the inverter didn't even blink. It's just barely coming up. Nice and slow. Oh, yeah. If you had a regular pump, it would just be bang. And that would shoot way up. And that damages components in your inverter and everything else. So from the time you pushed that start button on there, the pump did start to turn. Is yeah. that correct? But it's it was just, just slowly turning very started slowly. And just building and building and building and building and building. So we might have water out there now. We have water out there now. Yeah. You take a look and see we're hardly using any <coughs> anything is uh, power. With the good thing with these drives, is it, you can look and see. I'm only pulling six amps, six point one. As opposed to what, like fifteen or twenty? Seventeen. Amps? Seventeen amps. Okay. Yeah, your amps are going to be less because you're not using single phase. You're using three phase. And then as far as the switch that you're using to, to turn this on, um, you're going to be relying not on a pressure switch because of the way you're storing the water. It's going to be, it's going to be activated by a float switch. Right. So when the, when the tank depletes uh, to where the float switch kicks on, um, it will activate this and start the cycle. Correct. Right. And these drives come with a whole bunch of different inputs depending on how you want to control it. We're going to just use a switch and you just look in the manual, it's pretty simple to figure out. You just enable one of the terminals to be a switch 
and when the switch is open, it's off, and when it closes, it starts to pump just like me pushing the buttons here. Okay, and then what is this dial down here for? This dial is, if you wanted to use, that's, that's called a pot potentiometer switch. If you wanted to manually be able to, to drive it, it's just a matter of telling the drive, I want to be able to control the speed with the thumb wheel, and you would, it would allow you to use the thumb wheel. You would say, okay, zero is the bottom and 60 is the top, and then you would be able to use the thumb wheel. I don't have it set up like that. I just have it set up for a manual on and off. Okay, I have one other question then too. You'd mentioned to me the other day that um, you can adjust the rate or the speed of the motor of the well pump. Um, so depending on the, the depth of the well, you might have to run it up higher to get the head pressure, I guess, to bring the water to the surface. Um, or, or you could set it lower if you wanted it to pump at a slower rate. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, you, all pumps have a, a limit. You can only go so slow to where it's not doing anything. But let's say that we, we didn't have enough power to run six amps. You could, I could drop this down. Now right now I'm, I'm dropping the frequency. Let's see. They see the amps went down. I'm only pulling five amps right now. So that right now that's running the oil pump slower. It's slower. I'm not outside, so I don't know how much slower. No. But we have a a lot of power here, so I, we're not too concerned about running it. But if you had to run it slower, you could run it slower. But you also have to keep in mind. You can't run a pump too slow because it actually uses the water to help cool the motor itself. So, it's a fine line. You know, 50 hertz is okay, probably 45 is okay. You're gonna to come to a point where nothing is coming out. That's definitely not good. You need to have water flowing through that pump motor to cool it. Also, when you hook these up, those motors, three-phase motors can spin either direction. And if you hook it up and the amperage is extremely low, then you know it's probably going backwards. If you're not getting any water and it's, the amperage is really low, it's probably spinning backwards. And with well pumps, you can't spin them backwards for too long. You will actually spin the nuts that hold the impellers off. So there's a That's reason. Good to know. Yeah, there's a reason it's set up like that. If you don't see anything coming out, hey, think twice. Uh, switch the wire. Okay, now here's one other thing that we've been talking about doing because all of this is uh, over my head. And uh, We've kind of talked about doing uh, various seminars or workshops on how this operates. So if it's something that you're interested in doing, uh, you know, leave some information in the comments and we will uh, we'll try to make information available on that if we decide to do that. We may, we may do that in the springtime. So anyway, anything else you want to tell us about this? Uh, don't be scared about these frequency drives. They're not very expensive. Yeah, how much was that one, for example? This one was less than two hundred dollars. Okay. Um, they're all made in China, so don't go out and buy a super expensive one because chances are it was made in China anyway. So the only thing I don't like about these drives is it doesn't have a nice connection port to terminate these these end connectors, and I always just cut the plate so that the plate goes over and covers. But that's the only thing I don't like about them. But other than that, I mean. It's pretty straightforward. It's really simple. Don't be intimidated by, you know, the manual. It's it's not as complicated as as a thing. All right. Well, perfect. Appreciate it, Mike. Yep. Um, and we know that it works because we got water pumping out. We got water. Mm -hmm. All yep. right. Good enough. All right. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell, and uh, we'll see you next time. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and a share, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell. See you next time.